professor in the Department of Iberian and Latin American Cultures here at Stanford, and I'm serving as interim director of the Abbasi program in Islamic Studies. And I want to welcome everyone to this panel discussion and musical demonstration with the Alim Krasimov Ensemble and David Harrington of Kronos Quartet. This event is co-sponsored by the Abbasi program in Islamic Studies here at Stanford, Stanford Lively Arts, Stanford Humanities Center, and the Center for Russian, East European, and Eurasian Studies. And I also want to say, if you like what you hear tonight, then there is a concert Sunday at 7 p.m. Uh, it's at Dinkelspiel Auditorium here at Stanford. And there are tickets still available at the Lively Arts website. Now, beyond the performance, uh, we have a moderator here tonight. And our moderator is Professor Anna Schultz, uh, who came to Stanford in 2010 as an assistant professor of ethnomusicology. Professor Schultz received her PhD in ethnomusicology from the University of Illinois in 2004. And she has also taught at the University of Minnesota, the University of Illinois, and Ithaca College. Her first book, Singing a Hindu Nation, Marathi Devotional Performance and Nationalism, is forthcoming with Oxford University Press. It'll be out this year. This research was supported by a Fulbright-Hayes Doctoral Dissertation Research Abroad Fellowship, an American Fellowship from the American Association of University Women, a Neil Senior Fellowship in International Relations, and a University of Illinois Graduate College Travel Grant. Her published and forthcoming articles and book chapters are on the regional performance of Hindu nationalism, style and patronage in Marathi Kirtan, the aesthetics of suffering in the Indo-Caribbean diaspora, mobile recording technology, and ethnomusicological research, and narratives of race and ethnicity in bluegrass music. Uh, Professor Schultz's emerging research is on the paraliturgical music of the Beni Israel of India. And so now we'll begin. Really a pleasure to be here, um, and I really look forward to this event tonight. I went to um, the new uh, performance and demonstration, and it was just absolutely wonderful. Um, so I have to confess that I know very little about Azeri music, um, but I've really enjoyed getting to know about this project, this collaboration, over the past few days as we look toward this um, event. So. Um, how this is going to work, first I'll introduce everyone, and then um, we'll have a few minutes of introductory questions and um, discussion. And then we'll, we'll see a couple of film clips from documentaries about the Kazimov Ensemble and about the collaboration between Kazimov and Kronos. Um, and after that, we'll have some musical performance, and then the third section will be um, uh, sort of open to the floor for questions and discussion. So that will be the probably lengthiest part of the evening. Um, <clears throat> so let me uh, introduce the artists. Um, first, I'm very privileged to introduce Alim Kazimov, who is a world-renowned Muram singer, considered a living national treasure of Azerbaijan. Uh, and he's been performing Magam since he was just a very small boy, um, but didn't decide until he was about 19 to make it his sort of career path. He had uh, done other jobs before then. He had um, worked as an agricultural worker and as a driver. Uh, but then when he made the decision to pursue music full time, he, he uh, entered the Asaf Senali Music College and then the Azerbaijan University of Arts. Um, and his teacher was the well-known Muram singer, Aga Khan Abdulayev. So, and he's also joined by his daughter, Fergana Kazimov, um, who is amazingly talented and has, is his protege. Um, so he taught her throughout her young years, and at 17 they started, uh, at, when she was 17, they started performing together. Um, we're also joined by David Harrington of the Kronos Quartet, 
Um, and the Kronos Quartet, as you probably know, is comprised of David Harrington, John Sherba, Hank Dutt, and Jeffrey Zeigler. <coughs> They've pursued a singular artistic vision, combining a spirit of fearless exploration with a commitment to expanding the range and context of the string quartet. In the process, they've become one of the most celebrated and influential groups of our time, performing thousands of concerts worldwide, releasing more than 45 recordings of extraordinary breadth and creativity, um, collaborating with many of the world's most eclectic composers and performers, and commissioning more than 750 works and arrangements for string quartet. And David Harrington is the first violinist and founder of Kronos Quartet. And um, I'm also joined by Aida Husenova, who is a musicologist who focuses on Azeri music. She will be translating for us, but you should know that she is also a specialist in Azeri music. So I may you know, call upon her to elucidate some issues from time to time. And I'd also um, like it if she could perhaps introduce the band members whose names I didn't get. Sure, with pleasure. So let me introduce the band members. I will start probably from left to right. Um, so Zeki Valiev plays the tar. Um, then we have Rafael Eskarov, who plays traditional woodwind instruments, and first of all, balaban. Uh, then the youngest member of the group, uh, Javidan Nabiev, plays the traditional kettle drum called Nahara. And then uh, the the Kamancha will be played by Rauf Islamov, who is like the master of this instrument and the longest, long-term collaborator, member of this ensemble. So I think one of the reasons that this collaboration works so well, this Rainbow, Rainbow Project, is that all of the artists involved um, are such open and sensitive listeners. Um, so what that means is that when um, tensions arise, as they inevitably do, when these musical traditions um, come together, um, they're able to sort of mold those tensions to create a, a new musical reality, a new space um, that, that um, sort of values the talents and, and creativity of each person involved in the project. Um, so one of the things in this initial, you know, 10 to 15 minute discussion that I'd like to talk about is a couple of those tensions and how they work through them, how they resolve them. Um, and, you know, we'll also get to hear the results of that. And I think I'd also like to keep two important questions in mind um, that I read in the liner notes for the Rainbow CD. And these, these were posed by the ethnomusicologist Ted Levin. So first, how to move beyond superficial grooves toward deeper levels of musical connection, and to what standard to use as a measure of artistic success. <clears throat> um, so maybe I'll just go ahead and start with, with a question to um, both of you. Um, to David, I was wondering how you became attracted to the music of Alim Kazimov and the Kazimov Ensemble, and if there was something about this music that made you think it would work particularly well um, for a collaborative project like the one you um, uh, ultimately made. <coughs> well, it started uh, some 15 years ago when I first heard Alim, and as you will soon hear, his voice is um, elevating in every respect. And uh, <clears throat> I'd never heard a singer quite like Aleem. And, and um, as a player of a bowed instrument, um, singers are, are always, I always have my ears open to singers because they don't need a bow. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and um, we take so much uh, of what we do with how we do our instruments from the singers, and so when you have the rare opportunity to first hear a master, um, you take note. And um, at about that time maybe a little before, we, we had been working with uh, Frangis Ali Zadeh, composer from Azerbaijan. And so we began 
to know a little bit about Mugam, about other. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I have to remember that. Um, and, uh, and then after that, then I, it's when I first heard Aline. And so, so I began to realize there's something going on in Azerbaijan that I should know more about. And so it, it took a long time, not only to first meet Aline, but then for the circumstances to be possible for us to work together. And um, it was the Aga Khan Trust for Culture that um, made that possible initially. And um, I'll never forget the first few rehearsals in, in San Francisco because um, Fargana was not there. So when I, uh, I had heard Fargana, but when we first started working together, Alim was singing both parts. <laughs> it was fantastic as well. And uh, then when we were, we'd put together a number of songs and, um, and then we went to London for the world premiere and that's when I first heard Fargana. And uh, that's also an, an amazing uh, first experience is to hear her voice and uh, together they're just two of the greatest singers that I've ever heard. And um, Alim, I'm wondering if you had heard Kronos Quartet before um, David got in touch with you and what your thoughts were about the idea of the project when, when, you, know, when, when you first had the idea. Biz Kronos Kvartet'in hakkında demek biz eşitmiştik. Frengiz Erzade istirdi ki bir derviş eserin biz kasete yazar, diske yazar. Sonra neyse alınmadı ama ondan sonra biz o teklifi bizimle Erağı'ya giren de biz elbette sevindi ona göre ki hem Orada başka aletler ve başka ülkenin müzikçileri olacak ve e, biz daha geniş kütle karşısına çıkacak ve bu biz için hem mersuliyet hem şeref idi. Sonra e, hem de heyecanlı e, dergiler de var idi. Haradaki o mahanları biz çalışırdık ki birleştirerek e, neyin ki notta hem de hisleri birleştirerek onu orada biraz zahmet çektik. Hele onlar da biz de inşallah ki ben bilen o zahmet indi yavaş yavaş behresin verir. So things started with the music of Frangiz Aliza, the Azerbaijani composer. Um, there was a plan to perform her piece called Dervish. Um, that plan didn't work out, but that was the beginning of our collaboration. And um, uh, to me, I, this collaboration with the Kronos is a huge responsibility and an honor. So I know that uh, and I understand that it's a challenge to integrate folk songs and traditional music of Azerbaijan uh, with the format of quartet and string quartet and uh, uh, the like modern music styles. Uh, so we've spent quite a considerable amount of time working on this fusion, and I hope that we were able to accomplish it. Great, yes. You have accomplished it, sure. definitely. <laughs> Thanks, God. Um, I think maybe the next thing we can do is show a little clip from the documentary. So this is from a documentary on the Kasimov Ensemble that was made by Smithsonian, I believe. Um, and then we'll discuss this clip. <coughs> Sözleri dini musikini, dini bir ibadeti də 
qəlbən, ürəklə eləyəndə və musiqini də öz sənəti də qəlbən eləyəndə onlar gəlir Allahın dərgahında bir rəşir, olur bir xoş gözəllik və cəmaat orada hayl-mayl olur. Və yaxud mən deyim ki, mən muğam oxuyuram, mütləq gələcək oram, xeyr, ermənim, yanmıramsa, demək, işıq saça bilmərəm. Muğam bəstələnmir, muğam insan yaranında bəstələnib. İnsanın qidası, insan doğlanda, insan günü Adəm, həvva, hava, su, od, yemək ilə bir yerə gəlib. Ona görə onu hərə özü kimi apara bilər, özü kimi ifa eləyə bilər. Amma onu oturub bəstələmək olmaz. Bu, insan bəstələməyə döyür. Həsən, bu, just a very short little clip. Um, <clears throat> so my question about this um, is clearly you have a very spiritual connection um, to music uh, and, and I was wondering um, how you maintain that when you sing secular songs and also um, how, how you balance that um, spiritual sense of music when you collaborate with Kronos. Bu filmi niyə kəsdirər tez? Mən bir əhmətli anamı gördüm orada. Yavaş yavaş qəşək qəmlənirdim yaxşı mənada. So why did you cut off the movie? I, I saw my mother who oh, passed away. Oh, we can keep playing it. Thank you. Thank you. bu birinci bu yolu mən əyərləri bunlar hiss edəblərsə, demək bunların o hiss edən adamın özünün Daxili bir mənəvi pəncərəsi, qapısı, aynası açıqdır. Bu, ondan ilə irəli gəlir qulaq asan insanın. Və bu, belə bir, bu öyrədilməyib mənə. Yəni, bu dərsi mənə keçməyiblər. Bu, təcrübədən təcrübəyə düşdüyüm vəziyyətlərdən irəli gələrək bu öz-özünə Alınıb, sonra mən bilmişəm ki, bu nəsə bağlantı yarana bilir insanlarla ələqə və o insanların mənim özümün bu canlı aləmdən ayrılmağım və o tamaşaçıların bu canlı aləmdən ayrılıb başqa yerə gedməklərindən o söhbətlərdə mən bildim ki, bu sənətdə nəsə yaradmaq olur. O da Baxır, əhval ruhiyyə və vəziyyətə, səhnənin, tamaşaçıların, vaxtın, gələk o yerinə düşəndə o şeylər tez-tezə alına bilir. The spirituality that you mentioned is, can be sensed and understood only by those who have the windows and doors in their souls open so they can detect it, they can understand it. And if you can sense it, it means that you are open to this kind of, uh, the contents that indeed uh, like are in Muham, a part of Muham. Uh, these cannot be taught to the person. I have never been taught to uh, sing Muham this way or that way. Uh, this is the, uh, the thing that you, you Start, you begin to realize at certain point of your life and career and uh, after you you've realized it you continue and 
probably the spirituality um, that is now, I believe, present in our performances, it's a, it's a result of a long-lasting experience. And again, um, so much depends on, on, depend on the atmosphere in the audience and the, the way musicians feel on that particular moment. So the amount of spirituality and the, the, the quality of this connection is different every time. And um, David, I wondered if these sorts of issues came up at all in your rehearsals, um, issues of spirituality and, and religion. Well, I think every musician in the world is dealing with the same thing. And that is, how do you make the notes that you get to play in your lifetime add up to something? And how do you make them better than the ones that you made before? Yeah. And so while, while we never talk directly about um, certain spiritual uh, issues or that sort of topic in, directly in our rehearsals, as far as I'm concerned, the whole thing was about that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was so close that you don't even need to talk about it because you're trying to make the notes um, alive and have force and have some contact with the inner magnet that we all uh, have. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, well, maybe we can now show another film clip. And I think I did actually ask her to cut that off before what I had initially intended. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't check it before. Um, but let's put in the other um, DVD that now focuses on the collaboration between Kronos and Kazimov um, to help us to start thinking about um, the tension between improvisation and composition in, in the project. Can, can I say one more thing? Sure, yeah. And that is that um, these sorts of um, meetings among musicians don't just happen. They don't just fly out of the air and, and uh, although we have flown to each other at various points, but it takes a lot of planning. We needed um, a musical arranger, we needed a translator, we needed okay. ethnomusicologists, we, it, it, and we needed our entire office staff, we needed the trust for Aga Khan culture. Uh, so it, it's, it's a large scale human adventure that allows this sort of um, musical adventure to happen. Right. So there's a lot of preparation to even get to that point. Where That's you, right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I, with that in mind, I, I suppose this clip will throw us into that moment after all of these other things have been set up. And depends on what part of the clip you're showing. Um, I, I, day three. It's day three. Yes. <laughs> day three. just to get the basic notes. The music uses a lot of ornaments, a lot of little notes, which go by really quick. And those are challenging to notate. Sometimes you have to put less ornaments and you, you have to be judicious in which ones you pick, which ones you leave out. And another problem was a lot of the music is improvised or quasi-improvised, semi-improvised. So I had to choose what I was going to give to the Kronos what I was gonna and where I was gonna leave holes for improvising.
the way he inhabits the notes that he makes is very profoundly beautiful. And it's, it's like he's molding and shaping these notes in a way that, that we can only try to do with our bows. So we get a little bit of a window into what it was like there in the rehearsal studio. Um, and from this little clip and also from other things that I saw in, in the documentary, it seemed like one of the biggest sort of issues to navigate was how um, to balance the, the different ways of learning music. So Kronos, I, I gather, mainly learns with um, notated okay. scores. Okay. And Kazimov um, Ensemble generally okay. learns okay. orally. Okay. Which is not to say that um, one focuses entirely on composition and the other on improvisation, but that there's a sort of continuum. And you know, I know that Kronos has elements of, of improvisation in, in, in their performances long before meeting Kazimov Ensemble, and that, and that the repertoire, Kazimov repertoire, is based on compositions that were composed during the 20th century and arrangements that Alim himself um, has made. Um, so I'm just wondering how you found um, a, a sort of shared space on that continuum between oh, improvisation oh, and composition. And in your case in particular, I'm wondering if you learned um, a bit about Maram or did you just sort of get an intuitive sense of, of the sort of sound world of a particular composition? I think both, okay. actually, all at the same time. I mean, um, it was nice to see that again because I, I remember those days very, very well, and and the um, uh, the feeling of just jumping into something that that was so vast and deep, and that uh, Alim and and all of the musicians spent their lives with, and that we were at first appreciators f from afar, and then we got closer and closer, and. Um, what's been happening since um, the recording was made and since the early performances is I think every time we're feeling the, the space between improvisation and the notation is becoming more blurred all the time. And uh, we find that we need to be ready because uh, all of a sudden what's on the page might not be what we're hearing, and so we might be in a different place. Uh, they might be in a different place than we are, or we're in a different place than they are, and so, okay, what are you gonna do? Uh, well, we're gonna go with them. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and so, uh, it's, it's very interesting how, you know, you have to use your ear to navigate through what you're, uh, what you remember and then what you're seeing and, and where you're gonna end up. So some combination of it's, kind of the experience and listening. Right. And, and the other thing is I, I should say that, that Ralph is, is, is a very patient teacher too, mm -hmm. or, ornaments uh, and, and mm -hmm. style. And, mm -hmm. and you'll yeah, notice that, that um, uh, all the bowings, that his instrument is tuned in a different way than ours. And right. all of his bowings are exactly backwards of ours. <laughs> Which is kind of a mind-boggling yeah. experience. <laughs> I did wonder, actually, if, if you tried to imitate some of these techniques, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, if yeah. you used extended oh, techniques. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, by lis li listening and, and mm -hmm. applying what we already know and trying to extend what we know, uh -huh. we might find a new sound. And, and uh, right. that's continually what, what I'm searching for, is, mm -hmm. is a way to make my instrument sound mm -hmm. uh, like it hasn't sounded before. It's happiest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and for Alim, what was it like for you to work with um, musicians who, who um, use the notated score? You mentioned in the film at some point that um, it was a challenge for you when... folklore <laughs> Bir şey üç defa dokuyabilirsem, iki defa dokuyabilirsem ve onu tez eden bir dokuyabilirsem. Ama 
bu notla yazlanda elbette ki o o kadar orada serbestlik alınır elden. Ama evveler biraz gergin idik ama şimdi bir ki bu ansambul bu Kronos ansambul bizi biz herden birden yazımızdan çıkanda o eserleri ki iki defa üç defa tekrar edemeliyik. Onlar bizi istersemez o noktadan çıkıp tuturlar. Ve bu gergede öyle bilir ki ben artık ifa zamanı unuturam ki bunlar notla çağırma. Öyle bilir ki öyle hamımız bir yerde öyle canlı notsuz konsert veriyor. Ona göre bunlara bu musikçilere eziyet düşür ama biz de istersemez yine de o çerçeveni çalışırız ki saklayalım. The beauty of folk music and the uniqueness of folk music is that you can perform the same song like twice or three times or more and it's different like all the time. Every time is different. I understand that the notated music is different. It, we, the musicians do not have so much space for maneuvering. They have less freedom as far as I understand. But uh, I understand. I've uh, this makes me appreciate the Kronos, the, my collab our collaboration with Kronos even more, because um, there were moments where, when I completely forgot that we are playing with the musicians who use like note, notes, like the music, the score. Uh, it was amazing how uh, how fast and how um, how naturally we and how cohesive our experience was and um, so I appreciate and I'm thankful to Kronos for understanding what we are doing in music. Could I, could I say one thing about sure. notation? Um, I, I feel that um, musical notation is one of mankind's greatest um, accomplishments and the reason is that um, uh, various forms of musical notation allow musicians to perform and experience, directly experience uh, music that they probably wouldn't be able to do in any other way. And one of the things that I like to do in, with my life is to make uh, experiences of music concerts that bring the world together, if only for a moment. And the world of music is this incredibly vast, amazing, human place. And a concert can kind of focus a lot of the things that seem different, but maybe in their heart they're not different at all. They're, they're, they're cousins and brothers and uncles and grandparents. And, and um, musical notation allows that to happen, in my opinion. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. <clears throat> um, I'm thinking that perhaps the next thing to do um, is to move on to some performance, yes. if they don't yes. mind. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Bizim yatma vaxtımızdır. Ona göre biz indi yuxuda bırarsın bir kağız okuyacağım. So it's like a night time in Baku right now. So we feel a little bit sleepy. So what we're going to perform will be, we, we can like give it a title, like a dream. <laughs> Başlıyor. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Hm
olmaz olmaz yine ya. Mahur ne ya? Mahur ne ya? Sözler ne tadı yoksa? Neden ol bu tip 
پری وشتخ بر بیانه گلمز ندن آیم آن بیتی پری وشتخ بر بیانه گلمز مگر اون آل خرابه ایمدن او سانو جزانه گلمز آی دا دا دا Odan
Hanı bey öz görən nə oldu Məni dəyərdi qan tükətdi Qışdamın, çünki biz səhərə qədər yoxlu yoxlu çalıb oxuyacaq siz üçün. After such a welcoming reception, we will definitely sing and play until like tomorrow for you. Well, I'm 
glad. That's good news. I'm glad. Güzel, yakışır sözlü deyiz. Hoşumuza geldi. So maybe I'll see if we can fit in a couple of questions before um, we hear more music. Suallar, suallar. Okay, great. Um, A, aletlerin adlarını zehmet olmasa bizlere diyerdiniz. İzah edin ben ha. Sonra bir de bağlıcı bir şey ya. Gel ki böyle bir. Gördüğünüz için tar aletidir. So this is a tar. Tar üç seden ibarettir. It consists of three parts. Kelle. This is the head of the instrument. Hmm. Goal. Then we have a neck. Cevde. Tana. And this is the body. Tana. Tana da iki se ayrılır. The body itself, it's like you can Büyük see tana, clearly see tana. two two parts, a big bigger part and the smaller part. Bu golda 22 perdeden ibaret olur. So we have like 22, let's say frets, like the on the neck. 11 simi olur. 11 strings. Ve bunun üzerinde malın üreğinin perdesi seçilmiştir. So this is a skin. The upper part is made from the the skin of the heart of a cow. Wow, a cow. The cow's heart skin. Ona göre aldı göre. Ve dokuz da aşırı olur bu. Yeah, and then nine frets. Çöçlemez. For tuning. So Zaki's going to perform a short excerpt from the Mugam Seyga for us. Müjde edil ki seni görmeye canan geldi. Elini çar ele can, can söyle kim, can geldi. <gülüyor>
Tonde Tulsi. And maybe we could hear uh, the other instruments as well, get an introduction to the other <laughs> instruments. Ah, <laughs> Shamus <laughs> Heros. Oh, so Oh, very clever. So he is a master. He greeted you on our behalf. We just forgot we were so like tired, but he did it. So nice. So <laughs> now it's no need to play for you. <laughs> Enough. Balaban aleti üç sədən ibarətdir. Balaban consists of three parts. Əsas isə ər yağacıdır. Əsas. The main part is made of the apricot tree. Və bir isə qarğıdır, qarğıdan. Qəmişdə qarğıdır. Qəmişdə qarğıdır, bataqlıqlarda bitirir. Then the other part is made of bamboo. Bir hissəsi də üzüm ağacından hazırlanır. And another one is made from the grape tree. Ve sekiz delikten ibaret. It has eight holes. Yani bu kadar. Yeah, this is about the construction, the structure of the instrument. Ensemble'ın en cavani, bunu samaryota bırakmadılar. 
dediler samolotta ki atasından asından icazı alın ki bu çıkır uşağı oğurlayıp aparız. Ona ya bize atası anası bir şey yazdı, çağız çoğuz bunu bıraktılar. Dedim ona da bir sonra icazı verseler bir dakika öz texnikasını göstersin. So this is the youngest member of our group. Uh, to come here, we needed to get the permission from his parents. So they signed the special paper because otherwise we would have been considered as like kidnappers. <laughs> so he's here and I think he deserves like playing solo. <laughs> Ensemble'ın aksakkalı <gülüyor> Rauf Merlim'e söz verilir. <gülüyor> so let's give a floor to the to the very old man. He is the, uh, this there is a word aksakkal. This uh, like very eastern definition of the old man. And Rauf is our old man in our ensemble. So he's going to play Kemanche. Nazirdinle cazip bir salonla bizi zifledi bize <gülüyor> bir tane o mikrofonu da gelmedi. E mikrofonu da o tercüme etti. Ne ilan sürdü? Yani ben bayağı fikir verdim ki çok garibedir bizim aletler hamısı böyle üç seneler ibaret. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> As I was listening to my like uh, the, the, the the members of the ensemble, I noticed that interesting that everybody mentioned like three parts. So all our instruments seem to be consisted of three parts. Man, the also consists of three parts. <gülüyor> Bunda dedim, malum dedim benden, malum dersi. Bunda da kesi dersi, eyvanlar ağlamak için. Her anakonda var. Anakonda var burada, kesi var, ineği var. Sana, sana listesi değil, çaman sana. Ve kol listesi değil, bir de bu çaman değil biz buna. Ama her atın kuruğu da var ya. Burada. Atın kuyruğundan da bunlar. <gülüyor> Bu da ki balığın yüreği. Balığın yüreği olmaz mı? Evet, balığın dersi. <gülüyor> <gülüyor> so the fish skin uh, you can see on the top of the instrument and then the bow <gülüyor> is important <gülüyor> too. And the bow is made from the <gülüyor> horse tail. Dört, dört sünnel ibarettir. Four strings. 
و شرق ده با آلت چوب یایلی یعنی آذربایجان ده وار با آلت دن ایران ده وار ترکیه ده وار سورا هم بون باشکه فرمان وارد فرمان باشکه فرمان وارد فرمان وارد شامان سه چی می دی دیان کاغذ بون سالو باشکه سمت so the, this instrument is very common for the entire region of Middle East and uh, it can be found different varieties of this instrument. This instrument can be found in Iran and Turkey. The shape might be different, slightly different, the sound might be slightly different, but this is the same family, the Kamancha family. So now let me just play a little bit. back for the concert on Sunday, you'll know what all the instruments are called. Um, so one, perhaps one more question, and then we can maybe get the whole ensemble to play together. Yeah. Is that a snake skin, and did he kill it? Ilan dersi de, ilanı öldürmüşsünüz yani. Yok, bu anakonda dersi değil. Bu, ben için bunu, demek, Çin'den bir dostum var. O hediye gönderdi. Yes, indeed, it is a snake. O da hem de Uygurlar, değil mi daha? Uygurlar, Uygurların defi de oldu. I have a friend in China, in the Uygur part of China, and this is a friend, a gift that I got from him. It is a snake. Eyvanları hem yürüyken de dersin çağırırlar. 
It's too bad. We eat animals and then we use their skin. Bizi de ne ne ne zeyler o dünyada Allah bilir. Yeah, we would, yeah, there will be the day when we will all answer and be like responsible for that. Do they have sheep music? Sheep music? Do they like the music on sheep, like the American kind? Demek ki yazlı şekilde hansısa bir müzik yani siz özünüz yazırsınız. Özümüz böyle çok kısa böyle bir iki tersler hele böyle diyesin özümüzden verir. Ama bizim esas meselemiz budur ki biz okumuş muamları tersleri halmanların biz özümüz demek ona hele bir teze renk teze bir can katabiliyoruz. Demek o özümüzün o ansamblımızın hele bir öz yaratıcılığı teze bir don geydirmek kimi o zaman yaratır o bizi. Uh, no, we don't do much. We don't write music down. Uh, we like play and sing muhams and gazelles and folk songs in like different way. We this is like, wha- actually one of the purposes of our ensemble to rediscover the well-known songs and muhams, but we don't notate them. Ve her demeden o don biraz çok böyle artık olan da. O ustadların çok hoşuna gelmiyor, onlar başlıyorlar değinmeye ki bu ne oldu, bu niye böyle don bir eğri çıktı, eğri düzeltti. So the feedback is very controversial. I mean the response from those who love Muhammed and who know the rules of this art. So we are not always like praised for doing that. It's always different. <gülüyor> well, could, uh, is there a question? Azərbaycan və İran muğamı haqqında, yəni bu fərq nədədir? Məsələn, siz o ifa etdiyiniz muğamın İran muğamından təsəkkəndən fərq? Mənə gəldi, fərq ondadır ki, demək, devdik bəyək ki, bir görüşdə, demək, bunların fərqi əvvəl çox fərq olmayıb. Bir fərq olub ki, onlar fars dilində oxuyurlar, biz müəyyən sözlər, yəni Azərbaycan dilində oxuyurlar. Həmən o qəzərlərin içində ilə farsı, ərəb sözləri olduğunu var və qədimdə demək olar ki, elə bilək ki, bir bulaqdan qidalanmış bir şey olub. İndi isə bir az ayrılıb, yəni farsı musikində bir az qədimlikdən əsər alamət qalmıyıb, həm də Azərbaycan musikində qədimdən alamət qalmıyıb. Qədimdə çox seçilmirdi, amma hindi bir az seçilir müəyyən qədər. Uh, there was a time when both phenomena, let's say Persian Destkiah and Azerbaijan and Muham, uh, probably sounded the same because they all come from the same source. But eventually, they, of course, they like each of these two branches have become has become like more and more distinct from each other. I believe that Persian Destkiah has also changed a lot since like antiquity, and the same about Azerbaijani Destkiah. So now, yes, they are different. There are certain tones in certain of the mugams that are um, between the notes of piano, and um, or quarter tones, some of them, and um, so the certain tones we we adjust to whichever scale we happen to be playing. And I understand that they assume it is not equal interval. How how do they do to tune? Oh, oh, I, uh, yes. I mean, the, the, an octave is an octave, and and they they use different um, occasionally some different intervals, and that means that we need to put our fingers in a different place than we normally do, and th- that's a very um, hard thing for us to do because we 
have studied for many years to try to place the finger in, in a particular place that, that um, matches the, the music that we've grown up playing, and then all of a sudden to be cast into another world of intonation is, is sometimes um, a very big challenge for us. And um, that's, that's one of the things we needed to work on the most. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's very difficult. Um, we had another question back here. Um, it's uh, it's made from Arabic maqam, right? From the Arabic maqam, or is it different? Arab maqam is not a Yani, Arab Müəyyən bizə səba muğam var, bizdə haradasa seygaha oxşayır, amma ayrı bir şeydir. Bizdə demək olar ki, çalınıb oxunmur. Biz elə hərdən özümüz çalınıb oxuyuruq, amma onlarda çox inkişaf edib o səba muğamı. Və bir də demək olar ki, çalıqların çoxsu eyni gəlir, amma ad, elə bir onlarda ayrı ad qoyurlar, bizdə ayrı. Şurada elə bir onlarda nə deyirlər? Yok yok. Yani bizde mesela şuşlar deyilende onlarda başka ad koyulur. Yani adlar biraz fərqlidir ama muğamlar demek olar ki eynidir. Music wise, yes, there are a lot of similarities, but I would say that like names are different, and the mugham known as shushter might be known under a different name in Arabic tradition, or vice versa. So this is creates like a sort of confusion even for us. And for example, mugham seba, which is very representative for Arabic music tradition, is in Azerbaijani music. It's close. It, the closest relative is seigah. Uh, we don't have sabah, so it's it's it's it's a very interesting and very complicated uh, topic. Yeah, I'd say one last question, and then I think oh, where our well. um, our time is running down, and I'm sure everybody would like to hear them play again. So yes, let's yes, have. I, I was I was listening to the flute play drone behind the accompaniment, and he just kept the music going. So was he sort of Balabanın dümen ifasında mefkir verdim ki yani ki o ki uzun müddet sen eyni notu tutursan sen bu ki böyle yani müeyyen bir teknikadan yani nefes alma teknikasından istifade edilirsen nece teknikadı o? Ben onu meşgul etmişim yolu var onun müeyyen yolu var ki ümumiyyətlə balaban iki tərəfisi var yani onun sırf bu işlə meşgul olan da var belə sayesinde onun yolu var öyrənsin bir turba götürürsən, suun içə qoyursan, o su bul bul bul bul bul kəsilmədən onu gəlin məşk edirsən. Ortaya həqiqətən belədir. Aha, aha. So this is a technique that I've been like studying for years. And as Alim added, you put there, you you you use your instrument and you put it into the water and you start like blowing and the water is like this is a certain technique that you go through. I mean, you this is this how they study and how they accomplish this, this, uh, this steady tone that they can sustain like for a long time. <laughs> I would love to do the same with my voice, but I haven't accomplished much. <laughs> So could you treat us to one last piece? Bir musiqi son bir dənə parça mümkünsə. Aha. Dur gedək olmadıq. Hansı dur? Hı? Əşədə var, əşədə. Əşədə var, əşədə var. Dağların başı gedək. Eren gidelim ha? Eren gidelim. Eren gidelim. Eren
coming, and I hope you can make it on Sunday evening for the concert with Kronos Quartet. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Thank you for, for working with us.